Hey everyone, my name is Justin Johnson and I wanted to give a quick five minute run through of the new Mesh Toolkit. That stands for Mapping Ecosystem Services to Human Wellbeing. So here is the software um, and to start we're going to create a new project. We'll call this example. Once you've created a new project, you'll see there's a number of models that you can load or that will be loaded and we're going to be running today the carbon storage model. Before we run it, however, we need to set our area of interest. And if you already had a shapefile of where you were interested in, you could select it. But if you didn't have it, Mesh also provides a method for creating that shapefile. And so based on existing global data, as you can see here, we're going to select one of our watersheds. I'm going to select this little one down here. Um, so I'm entering in the ID. And this could be any one of the watersheds globally. Um, once you selected that, though, it actually creates the shape file for you, and we'll use this throughout the project. Um, once you have selected that, you're almost ready to set up the model. Um, but before you do that, actually, let me show you. Um, once you click on setup for the model, you'll see that there are a few bits of information that are needed, such as setting the current land use land cover map. Um, if you already had that, again, this is where you would point to those maps. But let's consider the case where you don't have that. Mesh can also create this information. And so the Mesh baseline data generator takes a quick look at which models you have selected um, and then links to methods for creating the baseline data. So this button here created the carbon pools biophysical table and this one will create the land use land cover raster. This um, baseline data generator function is not yet available for all the models in the beta, but we hope to have it ready soon for all of them. Once you've created it, the data, now we're ready to link to it in the invest model. So if you've ever run invest before, this should look very familiar because this literally is invest. And so any trainings that you've had on that might be relevant. Um, but for now, all we're going to do is navigate to our project folder. And you can see here, that's the shape file that we created for ourselves. And we're going to first point it to the land use land cover map that we created. And the other one is put it to the carbon pools map that we, or CSV that we created. Okay, so now the model's ready to run, and I clicked run, and it was successful. So we have now run the invest model, but just in as a setup run. We're going to then use this information to batch through multiple different models and multiple different scenarios. So to show that, we need to create some new scenarios. And so every model starts with the, just a baseline, and that's what we set up. But suppose we want to compare it to ag expansion scenario. Well, first we need to set what is an ag expansion scenario. If you don't have a map for you that has already created, you can use the invest scenario generator. And so, just like the invest model, we need to point this to some of the existing bits of information we've created, such as the land use land cover map, and it already has with it a default transition table. This will say what the probability of each different land use uh, type transitioning to different types would be. And you can set that yourself, but for the time being we'll use the default one and click run. And so that was successful too. So we've created the file and now we just need to associate it with the scenario. And here's the file we created. Okay, I'm going to save it. And I'm going to check this because now we're ready to run the mesh model. And so when I click run, it's going to look through each of the selected models and for each of the selected scenarios, create a pair of model and scenario. Now you could have even thousands of scenarios here and that points to one of the useful aspects of mesh is that it allows for quick batch processing. For now, I'm just going to click Run, and it calculated the carbon model for each of our two scenarios, and saved the results here. The first thing you might want to do is just check to see what they look like, and so I'll click the Map button. And so these two maps that are created are the total tons of carbon storage under each of the two scenarios. So taking a look at those, here it is for the baseline, and here it is for the ag expansion scenario. So you can see there's a little bit of change, and, but it's a little bit difficult to see right now. So 
we may want to actually change some of the things about how it appears. Um, an example of what you might want to do would be to change the color bar and change the cropping of values. Give it a thing, a title like carbon storage and a units. So this might be a more useful map. There's a lot of features uh, typical of ArcGIS built in here, such as the ability to zoom in and see the data. And this is what will be saved to our final report. So let's actually just do that once real quick. We're going to uh, save our results in projects, our project name, output, under runs, full mesh. There's a lot of folders here, but this is part of what you have to do. Um, and this is the ag expansion scenario, so we're going to put it in the carbon output folder. Okay, going back to the runs, um, the other thing you can do is actually create an automatic report. And so clicking report, this button here will analyze the results that you created and give you several options, in this case only one, for creating an automated report. So we'll choose the executive summary, and here it's going to dynamically create content by looking at the data that you gave it, calculate total carbon storage under the different scenarios, as well as plot the maps that you have set up for it. This can then be edited directly, or you can save it as a report to Microsoft Word. And so thus, uh, this is the, the end of the mesh model. This is a very simple example, and it can be extended with more scenarios, more models, and uh, many different ways of analyzing these questions. But this was a quick run through of how to do the carbon storage model under an ag expansion scenario. Thank you.